Hello, and welcome to Focus, the Catholic Answers podcast for living, understanding, and defending your Catholic faith. I am Cy Kellett, your host. And when exactly was Jesus crucified? That is our question this hour. And it's interesting, at least to me, quite interesting, that as you examine that question, you get into some issues of um, uh, how modern scholars do this, maybe mistakes modern scholars make, and what the latest scholarship might say about what uh, scholarship from the 19th and early 20th century uh, had to say. It's just a fascinating topic. When exactly is that period, or what? Or which year did it happen that uh, Jesus was crucified? To help us examine that question, uh, Jimmy Aiken, senior apologist here at Catholic Answers and proprietor of Jimmy Aiken's Mysterious World. Hello, Jimmy Aiken. Very hello, Cy Kellett. And we won't just be talking to you about what year Jesus died. We'll be able to name the day and the hour. Okay. All right. Yes, I love this. Uh, that is, uh, and will this, um, uh, well, may, maybe we'll get into it as we go about what the sources are for that. But primarily, of course, it would be the Gospels. Yes, that's correct. Although there are things that are mentioned in the Gospels, we are able to put some dates on. Mm -hmm based on sources outside the Gospels, like the writings of the Jewish historian Josephus and the uh, writings of Roman historians that tell us like when certain officials were in office and things like that. And there's enough details there that you can uh, piece together the mystery a bit. You can do some detective work. Indeed, yes. And I should say that this is something, so there, as we're going to see, there are two candidate years that are widely supported. Now, there are people have proposed others, but there are two candidate years that have been proposed for when Jesus was crucified. One is AD 30, and the other is AD 33. And the AD 33 date is the traditional one, but in the last couple of centuries, people have been advocating the AD 30 date. And there's not really a, a, a significant disagreement among scholars based on their affiliations or their opinions on other matters. So, for example, it's not like Protestant scholars advocate one date and Catholic scholars advocate another date. Uh, yeah. um, unbelieving scholars who don't don't think Christianity is true at all, they acknowledge, yeah, we've got historical evidence for these two dates. So, you know, apart from the Jesus mythicists, who are a fringe minority, the vast bulk of scholars, regardless of their opinion, regardless of where whether they're liberal or conservative or believing or unbelieving, will say we've got evidence that Jesus really did live and he really was crucified, and it was in one of these two years. And you will find both liberals and conservatives advocating for both AD 30 and for AD 33. And so it's not really something that divides people based on their confessional affiliation. So we don't need to worry about, oh, is one date liberal or is one date not Catholic or things <laughs> yeah. like that. Okay. Um, it's, it's strictly what does the evidence say? Oh, okay. All right. So if you're, you're a 30 AD, all, all of you people uh, think that way. Nope. Uh, all right. So let's do just do the clues then. So it's it's a kind of a detective mystery, and this is something you're really good at, Jimmy. So maybe start us with the clues. What are the clues that we have? Yeah, and for people, for listeners who want to read what we're talking about today, um, I did an article a number of years ago uh, called Seven, the number seven, seven clues that tell us precisely when Jesus died. So if you Google my name, Jimmy Aiken, and seven clues, Jesus died, it should come up for you. The first clue establishes the broad time frame, because one of the things that uh, the Gospels record, and particularly you'll find this in Matthew and in John, is that Jesus was crucified during the high priesthood of a man named Caiaphas. His fuller name was Josephus Caiaphas, or Joseph Caiaphas. But we know from Jewish sources when he served as high priest. And basically, it was from A.D. 18 to A.D. 36. So sometime in that basic time frame, A.D. 18 to 1836 is when Jesus was crucified. So that's our broadest time frame. But from there, we can start to narrow it down, because one of the things that all four of the Gospels tell us is that Jesus was sentenced to crucifixion by the Roman governor Pontius Pilate. And he had been—the reason—now— 
people who've read the nativity stories, you know, where Jesus is born in the reign of King Herod, they may wonder, well, why was there a Roman governor when mm, Jesus oh, yeah. grew up? If he was born under a king, why is there a governor when he grows up? And the answer is because um, Herod the Great had been appointed king of the Jews by the Roman Senate. And when Herod died, though, he had he had several sons that succeeded him in office, and no one of them was given the title king. Instead, they split up his territory and they gave different parts of it to different sons. And the sons, since they weren't kings, they had a different title. They were called tetrarchs, which means rulers of a fourth. And and one of the tetrarchs was a guy named Herod Archelaus. Now, we hear about Archelaus in Matthew's gospel, because when the Holy Family comes back from Egypt, Joseph discovers that Archelaus is ruling in Judea, and he's afraid to go there, so they divert and they go back to Joseph's other residence in Nazareth. Well, we... and. So Archelaus was a bad guy, you know, and readers of Matthew knew that. Well, so did a lot of other people. Archelaus was a bad guy. He he treated his subjects really poorly, and they complained about him to Caesar because, you know, it was Caesar who authorized all this. And so um, Caesar yanked Archelaus's tetrarchy. He took him out of power and appointed a Roman governor instead. That's why you have some of Herod's sons, like Herod Antipas and um, uh, uh, Herod Agrippa, reigning in other, and grandsons, reigning in parts of the territories we read about in the Gospels, but not in Judea. There was a Roman governor appointed for that, and there was a series of them. Normally, Roman governors uh, would reign for like a year, but sometimes they reign longer, and we know how long Pontius Pilate reigned. He reigned beginning in A.D. 26, so that shaves a few years off of our time frame, mm-hmm. to A.D. 36, which was the same year that Caiaphas fell from office. And like Archelaus, um, Pilate also got recalled to Rome and yanked from office. Um, but there were other Roman governors after him. In any event, we, based on our second clue, the governorship of Pontius Pilate, we can narrow our initial range of A.D. 18 to A.D. 36 down to A.D. 26 to A.D. 36. So just basically a 10-year period now. So that lets us know the next clue. But we can narrow it down further because there's a third clue. Okay. In Luke's gospel, Luke tells us that the ministry of John the Baptist began in the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar. Now, Tiberius began to reign when Augustus died. Augustus was the first Roman emperor. Tiberius was the second. And Augustus died in August of AD 14. And then the Roman Senate appointed Tiberius as his successor in September of A.D. 14. But there are a couple different ways that the ancients would, like Roman authors, would count how many years an emperor had been reigning. Okay. They might do it from the moment they became emperor in which case Tiberius's first year would begin in September of 14, or they would, they would uh, count beginning with the next January 1st and okay. when, the, when the new year began. And um, in this case, because Augustus died so late in the year and Tiberius didn't become emperor until September of 14, We've only got a a leeway of a few months here between the two dates. You know, September is not mid-September when he became emperor is not that far from January 1st. So even though you could debate it a a few months with a few months leeway, basically Tiberius's first year, you can treat it for practical purposes as being A.D. uh, 15. So if you then fast forward 14 more years from his first year to get to his 15th year, that tells you that the the 15th year of Tiberius Caesar is basically A.D. 29. Ah, uh, 
possibly beginning a, a couple of months before that in late AD 28. Wow. Yeah. So that's when John the Baptist's ministry began. And Jesus began his ministry shortly after John the Baptist. You know, he comes to John the Baptist, he, he gets baptized, he, he, and then he begins his ministry. So Jesus's ministry began shortly after that of John the Baptist. And that means that Jesus, we can estimate, began his ministry in A.D. 29. Now, what else do we know about when Jesus died? Well, clue number four, all four of the Gospels tell us that Jesus was crucified on a Friday. They refer to it as the day of preparation, which was a standard way of referring to Friday because Saturday was the Jewish Sabbath. And so consequently, you couldn't work on the Sabbath, like you couldn't cook you know, for example, on the Sabbath. So you needed to make preparations for the Sabbath on Friday. You do all of your meal cooking on Friday. You'd go fetch water that you could drink on 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 the Sabbath. You fetched you fetch that water on Saturday on Friday. You did everything you needed to do mm -hmm. to get ready for a day of downtime with no work on a Friday. So you prepared for the Sabbath on Friday, and Friday was thus the day of preparation. And we know that it's the day of that it is Friday because they then record all four of the Gospels that the next day was the Sabbath and that the day after the Sabbath was the first day of the week. Now, some people have tried to say, well, maybe the Sabbath is a reference to a high holy day, something other than Friday, like the day of Passover. Maybe they would consider that a Sabbath. But that proposal won't work in this situation because it says on the day after the Sabbath, it was the first day of the week or Sunday. So it's really clear from all four Gospels that Jesus was crucified on a Friday, then the Sabbath began at sundown on, on Friday. Mm-hmm. And then we get the first day of the week, Sunday, beginning on sundown on Saturday. So we've got a clear Friday, Saturday, Sunday sequence. So that is good news because there's seven days in a week, and we just eliminated six of them yeah. for, when he, for when he was crucified. So we've got a, it's one day of the week uh, sometime in a, about a seven-year period, if I'm following your argument right. Correct. Yes, I, that's something I should I should have clarified. Since Jesus's ministry began in AD twenty nine, we can shrink our date range even further because we said, okay, Pilate reigned from twenty six to thirty six, mm -hmm. but if Jesus's ministry didn't begin until twenty nine, we can shrink that date range down to um, down to twenty nine to thirty six. It's sometime between AD twenty nine and AD thirty six, and we know it was a Friday in that period. But there's still, so in the seven-year period, there's still a lot of Fridays. So we want to figure out which Friday it was if we can. And we can do that with our fifth clue. Our fifth clue is that the Gospels indicate that this Friday was in conjunction with Passover. And so what we can then do is look at that seven-year period and say, when was there a Friday in conjunction with Passover? Well, in AD 29, the year that uh, Jesus' ministry began, Passover was on a Monday, so it can't be AD 29. In AD 31, Passover was on a Tuesday, so it can't be AD 31. In AD 32, Passover was on a Monday again, so it can't be AD 32. In 34, Passover was a Wednesday. In 35, Passover was a Tuesday. And in 36, Passover was a Saturday. So none of those years work. 29, 31, 32, 34, 35, and 36 are all out. That oh, leaves us oh, yeah. with AD 30, when Passover was Friday, April 7th, and AD 33, when, fri when Passover was Friday, April 3rd. So, we we're left with these two possibilities. It's either Friday, April seventh of AD thirty, 
or it's Friday, April 3rd of AD 33. It's got to be one of those two. And that pretty much everyone agrees on. Doesn't matter if you're Catholic or Protestant or Orthodox or Jewish or atheist or whatever. Doesn't matter if you're liberal or conservative. Everybody orients towards those two possibilities. That's amazing how that narrows down so quickly. And just I think that was five clues were narrowed down to two dates uh, from the entire period. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. But there is a disagreement among those two. And even though, like I said, AD 33 is the traditional date, there's been this recent proposal that it's AD 30. And that's actually the more common opinion these days. You will find more scholars advocating AD 30 than AD 33. And when you say these days, early 21st century. Okay. Yeah. So this is something that, that the, the, the ancients would have said 33, but sometime in the modern period. The medievals would have said 33. Okay. But sometime in the modern period, that changed. People started to say, no, 30 is the more likely. Yes. And there are there are a few reasons for that. But I think the biggest one concerns the date, not of Jesus' death, okay, but the date of his birth. And uh, here's how here's how the argument goes for for here's this argument for the AD 30 position. Jesus was born during the reign of Herod the Great. That's something that, you know, Matthew and Luke are both really clear about. He's born during Herod the Great's reign. And he was born and Herod the Great died in 4 BC. So Jesus had to be born by 4 BC. And if you believe what Matthew says about the Magi coming from the East when Jesus was up to two years old, well, that had to happen before Herod died too, because they talked to Herod, you know, after after they vamoose and don't come back to tell him who the baby king is, he decides to kill all the babies in Bethlehem who were two years old and under based on the timing that the Magi had told him. So Jesus could have been up to two years old at that point. Now, it doesn't have to be two. It could be one, and maybe Herod just doubled it to be sure. You know, you don't want to... If you're going to murder your successor, you (laughs) want to make sure you really get him. Yeah. Don't be fussy about the dates if you're going to commit mass murder. Yeah. So, um, so, but that had to happen at some point before Herod died. Now, it may have been close to when Herod died, but if Jesus was up to two years old... When the Magi arrived, and the Magi arrived before Herod's death, then it would be plausible for Jesus to be born in 6 BC or maybe 7 BC. And so, based on this argumentation, many scholars today believe that Jesus was probably born in 6 or 7 BC. Okay, Luke, though, tells us that Jesus was about 30. You know, he might have been 28, 29. He might have been 31, 32. But he was about 30 when he began his ministry. He tells us that in Luke chapter 3. And so, if you say, well, if let's suppose Jesus was born in 6 BC. He would have been 30 in, um, in AD 24-ish. You know, you got to account for the fact there is no year zero mm-hmm. on this timeline. Um, but he would have been 30 about AD 24. And then if he didn't get crucified until AD, if that's when he was 30, he and he didn't get crucified until AD 33, that's nine years later. He would have been 39. If he All was right. born in AD, in, B, in 7 BC, he would have been 40 years old, mm-hmm. you know, at the time of the crucifixion. And that's just unimaginable that his ministry lasted for, you know, nine years. Right. And so uh, we don't have evidence of a nine-year ministry in the Gospels. And so that would lead you to say, well, okay, then it must have been AD 30, you know, because Uh, in in AD 30, he would have been, you know, about, he would have been a about, you know, 36 at the time of his death, and maybe he was 32 when when he began his ministry, so he was still about 30 if he was 32, yeah. and then he'd have a four-year ministry or a three-and-a-half-year ministry, and, and the dates would line up. Right. You right. can see how there's an appeal to the AD 30 date based on when Jesus was born, assuming that he was born in AD 6 or 7, in BC 6 or 7. 
And that are that that line of thought is then based on the premise that Herod died in 4 BC. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's widely accepted today that Herod died in 4 BC. And so that's why one of the key reasons why the AD 30 position has been so widely embraced. But it's wrong. The, the truth is, Herod did not die in 4 BC. And there, this has been shown by a number of recent scholars who have gone back. The dating, the reason people date him to, as dying in 4 BC is based on some stuff that Josephus says about the timing of his date, of his death. He mm-hmm. says that it was following an, a, a particular lunar eclipse and so forth. But the problem is there's more than one lunar eclipse in the right time frame. Mm-hmm. There was one lunar eclipse in 4 BC, and there was another lunar eclipse in 1 BC. And so the question is, which of these two lunar eclipses is Josephus talking about? Well, it, he didn't die immediately after the lunar eclipse. He also died in relation to, Josephus gives us other chronological clues, including um, its relationship to Passover and a whole bunch of stuff that Herod did between the eclipse and his death. And when you tally up all of these factors, it turns out there just was not enough time between the eclipse in 4 BC and when Herod would have needed to die for him to do all this stuff. Oh, Furthermore, that eclipse may not have even been clearly visible from Jerusalem, and it wasn't a total lunar eclipse. But the one in 1 BC was a better eclipse, and the timing did allow Herod to do all the things Josephus said he did before he died. And so it looks like Herod actually died in 1 BC. And like I said, this has been supported by a number of recent scholars who've treated this very carefully. And it also lines up better with the historic understanding of when Herod died. Well, let and, me, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to ask, like, well, uh, this is one of those places where the contemporary scholarship uh, may disagree with the, the stuff that people learned in school, including myself, you know? So how long does it take, do you think, for this to get straightened out where people actually Oh, am I going to? Well, is my generation going to have to die off? By the way, <laughs> that's what well. <laughs> I, I believe it was Enrico Fermi who said, yeah. "Who said science progresses one funeral at a time?" <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, because right. once people get educated in a certain point of view, they tend not to really re-examine it. Yeah, right. And right. so, given so, there we're we're in a phase where the the Herod died in one BC date is becoming better known because it is the better supported by the evidence Uh but it's going to take a while for that to percolate okay um in any event so if herod dies in 1 bc and jesus died uh, jesus was born a year or two before that that would put jesus's birth maybe in the last half of 3 bc or the first half of 2 bc and guess what that's the date that the church fathers tell us you have a uh, broad consensus among the church fathers saying Jesus was born in the 28th year of Augustus Caesar, which was 3 BC to 2 BC. So we've got independent testimony from there. We can also calculate it from Luke, because remember, Luke said that Jesus, that John the Baptist ministry began in AD 29, and Jesus was about 30. So you back up 30 years from AD 29, remembering that there's no year zero, and you land in 2 BC. Yes. Okay. So that all makes sense. So it looks like Jesus was actually born in 2 BC. He was not just about 30, but 30 when he began his ministry in AD 29. So how can we sort out which of the two remaining possibilities? Well, it it, it applies. Well, if he began his ministry in AD 29 and was crucified in AD 30, he had at most a one-year ministry. Right. Whereas if uh, if he began his ministry in AD 29 and was crucified in AD 33, then he would have a three to four year ministry. So at this point, we can go back to the Gospels for our sixth clue. The sixth clue is John records Jesus going to Jerusalem for Passover, which he had to do as an observant Jew every year. He rec- he recall he records Jesus going to Jerusalem for Passover three times. 
Jesus goes to Passover in John chapter 2, right after the wedding at Cana. He goes to Jerusalem for Passover. We're told, and it's not just he went to Jerusalem. He John tells us he went for Passover. So the first Passover that John records Jesus going is in John 2, right after the wedding at Cana. The second is in John 6, in the middle of Jesus' ministry. And the third is in John, is at the end of John 11. And this is the one where he gets crucified. Yeah. So if you're thinking about the amount of time that involves, the minute if you've got three Passovers, the minimum m- amount of time it's going to involve is two years and a little bit. Yeah. You right. Know? So like if you have if the first Passover, let's say that's April first, and let's just pretend Passover occurs on the same year every day, even though it doesn't. Well, then the second Passover would be April first, a year later, and the third Passover would be April first. A second year later. So you've got the minimum time frame between three Passovers is two years. So if Jesus began his ministry in AD 29 and he he then had a two-year ministry, then he could that's the minimum time, then he couldn't have been crucified until AD 31. And that means we've knocked out the AD 30 date. Yeah. So it has to be the AD 33 date. And so we can say with high confidence, based on the evidence, that Jesus' actual date of death was Friday, April 3rd, AD 33. That is so precise. That is wild that you can get it to a, a, a single day from that entire era. Uh, nice narrowing down, <laughs> given all yeah. the clues. but. With a seventh clue, we can narrow it down further because uh-huh. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the three synoptic gospels, tell us what time of day Jesus was crucified and or when he died, actually. And they they all three say he died at the ninth hour. Well, there were different ways of reckoning hours in the ancient world, and they weren't as precise as our method. You know, today we have clocks of 60 minutes, and each minute is exactly 60 seconds. So there's a little flexibility here. But uh, But speaking approximatively, what they would have called the ninth hour, given the way the Synoptic Gospels reckon time, is what we would call 3 p.m. So Jesus died 3 p.m. ish could be a little before or after, but 3 p.m., April 3rd, A.D. 33. That's when the redemption of the world happened. That's extraordinary, Jimmy. That is extraordinary to narrow it down like that. Um, wow. And, and I didn't always have this opinion. I initial, For some time, I was reading all these scholars who were saying AD 30, and I kind of accepted that. Mm-hmm. But then when I started studying biblical chronology and looked at the actual arguments, it's like, oh, wow, the traditional date is better supported by the evidence. So I had to change my view. It, that's that's the interesting thing is that um, the that the ancients uh, it's it's a funny thing really to have disregarded the ancients because of basically because of a, a misunderstanding of a, one lunar eclipse the mm-hmm. what the ancients had to say or what the medievals had to say uh, got completely thrown out. Yeah, well, the good thing is biblical chronologers who are a minority in scholarship, the people who actually study the chronology are a very small group Mm -hmm. of people. Um, They do look at evidence for multiple possibilities, and they look at both sides of arguments. Um, Unfortunately, most biblical scholars don't do the chronology work. They just accept whatever their seminary professors told them, and they don't really dig into it in this kind of detail. But... There are those who have done so, and uh, and I find their arguments very convincing. Uh, Jimmy, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time to walk us through it as we're uh, approaching uh, the annual commemoration of the date of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. Um, Passover is a movable feast. I, I, from what you said, I guess, I, I should just emphasize that. Passover is not the—it's not like— it's- 
It's not the same day every year. It does yeah. vary. And that's 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 also why the that's why Easter varies um from year to year because um the Jewish people used a lunisolar calendar. That means it incorporated information from both what the sun was doing and what the moon was doing. Now today in modern America we use a purely solar calendar. Mm-hmm. The Gregorian calendar that we use is based on what the sun is doing. It's it doesn't care at all what the moon does. Right. But um and and that's because our months have a fixed number of days. You know, January has 31, February has 28, although sometimes 29, March has 30 and so forth. But each has a fixed number of days. In the ancient world though, in the Jewish world, they determined the length of the month by the sighting of the new moon and that and and specifically in the, in Judea they determined it by the sighting of the new moon in Jerusalem and it's actually an interesting uh study to read about how they did it they you know the jewish people were ruled by the sanhedrin and so you needed people to cite the new moon to say okay it's time to announce that we're in a new month but different people have different levels of eyesight. You know, some people are sharp eyed, (laughs) some people are almost blind. So what what do you do to figure out uh, whether the new moon has risen? Well, it required testimony from at least two witnesses, since in Jewish law, things shall be confirmed by the mouths of two or three witnesses. So you needed two people to cite the new moon from Jerusalem. And how do you know they got it right? How do you know that uh, that they aren't lying to you for some reason? Well, they would test them. So if you if 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 the uh, if the two witnesses come up to the Sanhedrin and say we just saw the new moon, they would say, okay, so which way were the horns of the new moon pointing to the right or to the left? Ah, uh, yeah. And if they didn't answer correctly, they'd say, ah, you're, you're you're we don't believe you. And they would declare the new moon to have been sighted the next day because it wasn't allowed to vary by more than a day. Right. So um so because Passover because Jewish months are based on the sighting of the new moon, it they don't have an exactly equal number of days and so it would the month in which Passover occurs would drift a little bit on the Jewish calendar, and that's why Passover would vary a little bit from one year to another. Now, in today on the Gregorian calendar, um, Easter, the timing of Easter is not determined by the timing of Passover, but it is determined by the uh, by the spring by the the first full moon following the spring equinox, and so. Because when exactly the first full moon is following the spring equinox, on or after the spring equinox, that varies from year to year. And so that's why Easter varies from year to year on our calendar. Uh, Jimmy, thanks very much. I, and all, all of this, I'm thinking about uh, Dennis the Short, too. He did better than people than modern scholars gave him credit. He was a few years closer than He <laughs> did, yes. Modern. Yeah. So for people who may not know, Dennis the Short, or to use his Latin, or Dennis the Little, um, to use his his Latin name Dionysius Exiguus, was the um, monk who calculated and at Rome who calculated how many years it had been since Jesus was born, and that gave us our modern AD system. Yeah. That was that was that calculation was done by Dionysius Exiguus or Dennis the Short, and um, he calculated that Jesus was born in one BC. And our best evidence today is that he was born in the back half of three or the first half of two. So he was off by like a year. Uh, yeah, after five, after year, al- almost year 500. Two. Yeah. 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 Uh, pretty good. Pretty good work, Dennis. Um, so sometime uh, two or three BC, Jesus is born, begins his public ministry at ar- around 29 AD, dies, uh, as you said, on April 3rd, 33 AD. That's right. Thank you, Jimmy. I really appreciate that you took the time. My pleasure. All right, that will do it for us. Thank you for listening. If you got a question or a comment about this episode, maybe you want to suggest a future episode, you can always reach us by sending an email to focus at catholic.com. Uh, if you would like to support us financially, uh, help keep the lights on as we do this each week, you can uh, do that by going to give 
givecatholic.com, givecatholic.com. And wherever you listen, if you would give us those five stars and write a few words in support of what we do here, maybe a, a nice comment that helps other people to decide whether they're going to listen and helps to grow the show. We thank you for your support. That'll do it for this time. We'll see you next time, God willing, right here on Catholic Answers Focus. Focus.